Hi, 10-3 formulas in three dimensions. I learned to apply Euler's formula to find the number of vertices, edges, and faces of a polyhedron. And then we also want to develop and apply the distance and midpoint formulas in three dimensions. So first, we kind of need to define a polyhedron. And it's formed by four or more polygons that intersect only at their edges. Prisms and pyramids are, are polyhedrons, but cylinders and cones are not. So here are some examples and non-examples of polyhedrons. And now let's go with this formula. Euler's formula it says for any polyhedron with V vertices, E edges, and F faces, um, we come up with this formula. V minus E plus F equals 2. So um, let's look at this to make sure that it works. Here's my hexagonal prism. Vertices are going to be all the corners. So there's 6 here. There's 12. Edges are going to be all of these. 6, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And then faces, we have to count them up. So there's 1, 2, and then the 6 that are around there. So that's going to be 8. And we want to check this formula. So 12 minus 18 plus 8 has to give me 2. So we want to check to see if that's true. Um, 12 minus 18 would be negative 6 plus 8. Is that 2? Negative 6 plus 8 would be a negative, or excuse me, would be positive 2. So yes, that equals. The Euler's formula does work. Alright, so here's another example to check and see. Find the number of vertices, edges, and faces of the polyhedron. Use your results to verify Euler's formula. So if I look at vertices, I have to count all of these points. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Edges, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Faces, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now, we remember there is kind of a square pyramid or square right here in between the two pyramids, but we can't count that because those two are touching, so we really don't see that base right here. We're just counting all these different triangles. So, my faces, I'm going to have 8. And so, right, so, plugging this into the formula, we get um, 6 minus 12 plus 8. Again, I want to check to make sure if that equals 2. 6 minus 12 is going to be negative 6 plus 8. And this negative 6 plus 8 is a positive 2, so 2 is equal to 2. So this does work. That is how I would verify the formula. All right, now we're going to talk about the diagonal of a 3D shape. So we're going to use um, a rectangular prism to kind of show how this works. And so I have this right triangle here using h, x, and d. So using Pythagorean theorem, I would say h squared plus x squared is equal to d squared. And then I also have another right triangle right here kind of laying on the base. Um, it would be L squared plus W squared is equal to X squared. Okay, And then so what I'm going to do or what I can do is I can substitute um, L squared plus W squared in place of X squared since I know that X squared is equal to L squared plus W squared. So if I buy substitution, I would get this. H squared plus L squared plus W squared is equal to d squared. Okay. So my diagonal, my d, is going to actually equal to the square root of h squared plus l squared plus w squared. So that's kind of a quick way of how we derive this formula here. The length of a diagonal of a right rectangular prism with length l, w, and h is this right here. D is equal to the square root of L squared plus W squared plus dot H squared. 
Okay, so here's an example. Um, these are my dimensions. This would be my length, width, and height. Um, so my diagonal is equal to the square root of 6 squared plus 8 squared plus 10 squared. And then so this would be 36 plus 64 plus 100. All right, so which would equal the square root of 200 if I add these together. Now, um, we could factor this out, and that's going to give me 10 square roots of 2. If I factor this out into 2 and then 100, and I get my pairs. If I ask you to simplify it in simplest radical form, this would be your answer. Uh, you could also, I might ask you to put this into the calculator and round to the nearest hundredth or nearest tenth. So that's going to be approximately 14.14 centimeters. Okay, so either one of those two be, could, could be a potential way that I might ask you to solve this type of problem. Uh, moving on to number four, I'm going to actually leave that one up to you. So you can check with me and make sure you got that one right. All right but now we need to talk about um, distance and midpoint formulas in three dimensions. And they look awfully similar to um, what we did with the two dimensions for midpoint and distance. Um, except there's this Z term right here. Since it's three dimensions, I'm going to have three axes. So I have an X term, a Y term, and a Z term. So I'm... Um, I'm going to show you how to do one here in a second, but these are the formulas. All right, so find the distance between the given points, find the midpoint of the segment with the given endpoint. So we're going to do both, so I'm going to kind of split this in half. I'm going to do distance on one side and midpoint on the other. So my distance is going to equal to the square root of, right, if I subtract my x's, it's going to be 0 minus 2 squared plus 0 minus 8 squared plus 0 minus 5 squared, All right, which is going to give me d is equal to the square root of 4 plus 64 plus 25. If I add that into the calculator right quick, that gives me a distance of 93, square root of 93. Again, if I put that in the calculator and I round it, to the nearest hundredth, that's going to give me um, 9.64. Right. Now for the midpoint, actually the direction say around to the nearest tenth, so it's actually 9.6. Right. Now back to the midpoint. Um, I'm going to have to find the average of my x's, so that's 0 plus 2 over 2, 0 plus 8 over 2, and 0 plus 5 over 2. That's going to be 2 over 2, 8 over 2, and 5 over 2. I'm simplifying this out. My midpoint then is going to be 1, 4, and 2.5. Okay. Number 6, I'm going to let you try that one because it's the same steps to do.